Hi friends, I am here today to talk to you about whether or not your story is good enough to make a great memoir. My name is Kelly Notaris. I have been a book editor for over 20 years, helping some of the most popular writers in the spirituality, self-help, personal growth, inspirational memoir space, get their books onto the page and into the world. I am the founder and CEO of KN Literary Arts. We are an editorial studio that helps authors just like you get the support you need no matter where you are in the publishing journey. Whether you're just at the beginning or you need someone to hold your hand through self-publishing, check us out at KN Literary Com. Now, I want to talk to you today about a question I get all the time. Is my story good enough for me to write a memoir? It's such a touching question by itself because, of course, there's nothing that's more precious to us than our own experience. So our own stories are really, really important. Whether or not they make a good memoir, different question, but they are so, so important. So the first thing I want to say is there is no story that is insignificant if it is significant to you. And there's no story that ought not to be put on the page if it's important for you and somehow in the process of doing so, you are gonna get something like growth, transformation, some sort of healing process. That makes it important by itself to get that memoir onto the page. But the question I wanna talk about is whether or not other people are going to find your story interesting, okay? Because that's a really big difference. Now, the people who are in your life, the ones who are maybe just egging you on saying, hey, I really think you should write your memoir, they're people who know you. In their world, you are a celebrity. And a celebrity is one of the types of people that just about anybody wants to read about, right? We wanna know the inner workings of the worlds of the people that we know and love, even if there's someone that we don't know personally, even if they're a sports legend or a politician or a movie star, we want to know the inside of their lives. We feel like we know them. So that is a really, really um, interesting way to look at the friends and family who already know you. In, in their world, you are a celebrity like that. They will definitely buy your book. They definitely think you should put your story onto the page and people will be interested in reading it. But there's a huge difference between the people who know you and love you and see you as a celebrity in their world and the people who've never heard of you before who are out there looking for a good read. They're looking for a book that's gonna be interesting, maybe it'll be informative, but mostly entertaining. When it comes to memoir, entertainment is actually the reason most people come to the bookshelf. So it's really important to look at who is your audience and why are they purchasing a book. If you are writing a memoir, they're probably purchasing it for, like I said, entertainment or some sort of catharsis, right? I know I am a huge memoir reader and I love reading stories that are unbelievable, where someone triumphs in the face of such adversity, I can't possibly believe they made it through and the writing is just gorgeous. So I get an entertainment value out of reading it, which is really important because it takes a long time to read a memoir. So a typical memoir is about 70,000 words, and that can be anywhere between 20 and 30 hours of reading, depending on how fast you read. That is a lot of time in our you know, Instagram world where we're just scrolling through posts and we're expecting to get onto the next thing within the next 15 to 30 seconds. Being willing to commit that many hours to doing something, you have to feel very incentivized to do it, right? So what is the incentive for someone who doesn't know you, for whom you are not a celebrity, they, they, they don't know you from you know the next person walking down the street, why would they pick up your memoir? The answer is that you have a story that is well-paced, exciting, entertaining, reads like a novel, and added bonus is true. So these are the questions I want you to ask. If the question you're asking is, am I someone who can write a memoir that a lot of people are going to want to read? That is a very different question from, should I write my memoir? Okay, it's really important. I wanna give you a little metaphor. I'm a gardener as of one year. This is my first year gardening. And you know, if I set out and said, I will be a complete failure unless I grow an award-winning you know, zucchini, <laughs> the biggest zucchini in the county. If I don't do that in my first year of doing this, even though I've never done it before, I really know very little about gardening, I'm just starting poking around on YouTube, learning about gardening, just like you're poking around on YouTube, learning about memoir. Um, if I said I had to be the absolute best and win the you know, blue ribbon at the local county fair, I would be setting myself up for failure. I actually don't have any of what it takes in terms of even the foundation in my yard, 
right? So I've been spending this year just digging beds in my yard and um, learning about different types of soil and what kinds of amendments I need to make to make the soil rich, right? I'm not even really worried about the vegetables I'm going to grow this season. I'm, I'm planting vegetables, but I'm kind of like, if, if I get vegetables out of this deal, that's going to be great. This year is just a learning planning year, right? For many people, the first manuscript they write is the learning and planning manuscript. It doesn't mean it's not worth putting out there just because you may not find a publisher for it or just because may, you may not actually hit the New York Times list. That would be the equivalent of winning the blue ribbon, right? You know, somebody who just goes out in their yard and throws seeds around, that's a big deal. Like, wow, I'm actually taking a step towards something that I want, gardening. But like, if I'm just throwing seeds around, I'm, there's no way I'm gonna be able to compete with somebody who has spent their entire career, let's say, um, learning how to grow magnificent award-winning vegetables, right? So most of the memoirists that you see on the New York Times list or that are getting picked up by the traditional houses, these are people who write for a living. This is not their first rodeo. <laughs> they are out there writing, maybe they're a journalist, maybe they've been um, writing for a major magazine or newspaper. Maybe this isn't the first book they write. I often like to talk about Elizabeth Gilbert who wrote Eat, Pray, Love because that book I think people think was um, sprung from the head of Zeus like Athena, right? It didn't have any precursor. Just next thing you know, she's a huge New York Times bestseller. Not true. She was a writer at the level of her career. She had already written a book that was very critically acclaimed. It was not a major success. Isn't that interesting? She wrote a book that was critically acclaimed and not a major success. And then she wrote this book. And by that point, her publisher knew her, knew that she was a go-getter. She was going to really take her whole platform to the next level. She was hugely mediagenic. She could talk on camera. She could talk on stage. All of these were things they already knew because they had already bought her first book and published it. So there was a lot that happened in advance of her becoming a huge bestseller for Eat, Pray, Love. Most people don't realize that. So a lot of my, my clients, they come and they say, I want to write a book like that. I have a similar journey. Totally get that. Your book deserves to be written. Whether or not it can compete with someone out there who's um, been a storyteller, who has no, who knows how to take a story, even a simple one, and make it hugely dramatic, knows how to create a three-act structure um, that's similar to what they create in movies where the reader is on the edge of their seat at the end of every chapter and we have deaths and we have successes and we have allies and enemies and we have, you know, going into the inmost cave. These are all stages of the hero's journey that anyone who's putting together a story professionally and is a story writer professionally, whether it's a screenwriter, a playwright, or um, a novelist, or a memoirist, they know these techniques and tools, right? So the story itself might not even matter that much. The story itself might be um, on its own, if you just told it straightforwardly, kind of underwhelming. It's the craft of the art of creating the story arc and the story structure and that narrative flow that it's hard for a first time writer to compete with, frankly. It sometimes takes a couple tries to get to the point and it, and it takes a lot of ambition and a lot of commitment, okay? So again, many of my authors are coming to me and they just need to get this story out of their body because it's actually doing them harm. It's usually something, a tragic story of childhood. Um, maybe it's abuse, maybe it was some sort of an illness, maybe it was the loss of someone really important like a parent or even their child. They have to get it on the page. So life is asking for it. And even their friends who consider them a local celebrity are asking for it. It is worth writing that story. It is, I'm going to tell you one more time, your story is worth writing. It is worth me getting out there and digging in the dirt and building a bed and seeing what grows. It's worth it for me, the process, the being outside, the spending my weekends in my yard, the um, contributing to something that's going to blossom over the course of years. All of these things are important. They, they are worth me doing. So your story is worth you telling. But if what your goal is, is to find an audience of readers who've never heard of you before, don't know you at all, you are going to need to do a lot of research an understanding of story structure, how to turn your story regardless of what it is. Everyone has a story that could become a compelling memoir. One of my favorite memoirists is Dani Shapiro, D-A-N-I Shapiro. Um, she writes what I would call somewhat quiet memoirs. They're not all hugely dramatic. There's usually one dramatic turning point in the middle of it, but not always even. Um, her, her book Hourglass does not have a, you know, a major inciting event. It's just the story of being with 
her husband of what it means to be married. So it's not that, so if you looked at her story of her marriage, you might say, wow, they're, they're happily married. You know, they've been married for like 20 years. Like what is there to write about? Right? So that's oftentimes what my authors are asking themselves. Well, I don't know if my story is good enough. It's not the story. It's the telling. The telling is what makes your story readable to a wide audience of people who don't know you. So you have to learn the craft of memoir to do that. You have to learn the craft of storytelling, the craft of writing a novel, in fact. Novels are very carefully wrought. They are not just um, a, a dumping of ideas on the page. They are very carefully orchestrated and choreographed so that a reader is brought to their own emotional edge over and over again. That is what's required if you want to grow that blue ribbon zucchini. <laughs> if you want to, if you want to hit the New York Times list, if you want to find a trad traditional publisher, you must be a writer. You must know the trade and craft of writing. It's just the, the facts. But that doesn't mean you have to spend the next 10 years doing it just to get your story to the page. Having your book in the world is something that life is asking for. And I'll tell you why I know that. Never before in the history of humanity has it been possible for anyone to get their book onto a shelf. And it is completely possible to do that today through the magic of print on demand self-publishing. I know it sounds so, it's like, oh gosh, technology, but I'm telling you that piece of technology, it, it was divinely sent, I believe, that anyone who needs the process of writing in order to work through, grow and heal, to become a more integrated person, to become a more whole person, to share a piece of their life with their family, with their friends, with their loved ones, with their clientele, can do that for the first time ever. So please take advantage of that. Don't tell yourself, if I am not somebody who's been planning out a garden for the last 10 years, that's now perfectly primed with just the right soil and I know all the right fertilizer and I know which seeds to use, et cetera, to grow that you know, blue ribbon zucchini, that doesn't mean you shouldn't have a vegetable garden. It just means you can take off the pressure. This is not about writing a New York Times bestseller. This is about you going through the whole making process of putting your story on the page. It may not be a critically acclaimed book. It may not be a bestseller in the technical term, a bestseller. But for you, it may actually be the thing you were here to do. And I can't help but say, I want you to do it. It's important if you feel the draw. Take off the pressure of you needing to be the next Elizabeth Gilbert or the next Danny Shapiro or whoever the you know memoirist is that you love. Take off that pressure. It's unlikely if you haven't been studying the craft of storytelling for a really long time that you will be able to compete. It just is. It's very unlikely that I will be able to grow a zucchini that will even make the competition, much less win the blue ribbon, because that's just not where I've spent my time. But I'll tell you, it is still worth my time. The journey is the goal. The journey is the goal. So please do yourself a favor, do your children a favor, your family, the people who love you, the people who really want and need your wisdom and will read anything you write because you are one of their celebrities. Do them a favor and write this book. All right, of course, at KN Literary, we can help. We specialize in authors who need that extra handholding because they haven't actually spent their entire career as a writer. That's why we're here. We're here. We are career writers. We're career editors. We're career book people. We are here to help you every step of the way from figuring out what your hook should be, what your story should be, what your outline should be, all the way up through the process of self-publishing the book so you do not have to navigate that very complicated maze on your own. We are here for you. You can find us at knliterary.com. And in the meantime, happy writing.